Welcome to Digital Asset News. My name is Rob and welcome to 2023. I have to tell you, 2022 was not our best year. I can uh, totally agree with a lot of people on that one, but there's some things that are going on right now in the crypto market. And if we zoom out, I think it can give us uh, a better picture about what's going on. So let's just jump right in. The first thing you're going to notice here is that I want to take a look at just the big overall picture of monthly return tables. This is uh, from uh, Ben's website in the Cryptoverse, link in the description. And uh, we can see that, you know, in all honesty, I mean, so far it's it's January 2nd, 2023. And we're doing pretty good. We're up uh, one whole percent. So everybody's happy about that. But I want to take a look at how things are as far as as it pertains to cycles and what's happening. And what I want to do is just break it down by if we take a look at the four year cycles, there's what I call the reset years. And those are two years after the all time high. That was that would be 2015. 2019 and coincidentally 2023 and when i'm talking about four-year cycles as, a, as far as like a quick review of course everything starts with the halving right 2012 a halving then we had an all-time high then a dip and a reset so in this situation 2013 was the all-time high the reset years or year was 2015 same thing in 2016 we had a halving all-time high was 2017 reset year was 2019 and of course we're doing this again the all-time high was 2021 the reset year was 2023. And what I wanted to see real quick was what are the prices in the reset years, the very beginning? Because I think when we can zoom out on that, it'll help a lot of people. And this is what we got. And it's amazing to me how people forget just how far along we've come. In 2015, the first reset year, again, tears out the all time Bitcoin's price was $314. 314. In 2019, two years after the all-time high, it was 3,794. I remember those. I remember that year. It was awful because I started investing in 2017 and just saw everything took a big dive in 2018. 85, 90, 95 percent, 99 percent in some case of my altcoins. And now in 2023, as of January 1st, we're at 16,728. Again, these are on. The reset years. And what I want to take a look at then is just jump back because these percentages are, you know, they're cute, they're nice, they're adorable. Uh, they can they can tell some things, but to get a real picture of things uh, about what's going on. And then I will just remind everybody that uh, January, as far as the reset years, are not good months. Just because, you know, in January right now, we're at 0.95% or 1% doesn't mean we can't go lower. What I want to take a look at was just what that looks like as far as for these reset years. And again, January 1st, somewhere around here, uh, $300. It looks in the direction of a going up. Very simple. 2015, that's that's what it should look like uh, as far as like the reset years. Not what it should look like, but what it does look like or did look like. The same thing can be said for 2019. It was pretty much an up year. And of course, there was some sideways action, a little bit of decline, but again, looking pretty good. Now, if we take a look here at 2014, this is one year after the all-time high. Remember, all-time high was 2013, 2017, 2021. In those years, one year after the all-time high, I call that the dip year, it looks exactly like what, it's, what it sounds like. It's just in a negative going lower pattern. The same thing can be said for 2018. That was an awful, awful year. Again, just keeps going down, 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 as opposed to those reset years. And uh, then, of course, not to leave it out, but uh, in 2022, I mean, what it looked like, just a big catastrophe just going down. So in all those years, that's what we look like. And coincidentally, even in 2022, we had this assumption that we had hit the all-time lows. But one thing to note is that in 2015, we hit the low of 172. That was 85% from the peak. And then in 2018, 80, 84%. And those happened December and January. January and December. Now, we thought it was in June of, the, of 2022. That was wrong. And we thought, well, maybe in November, that's the all-time low, which it was for 2022. But I don't think that is the low for the four-year cycle. I still think we could go down to... 12K or 10K. And if, if history is any, any indicator, and again, any kind of past performance is not indicative of future results, but there are some similarities. And of course, 85% uh, last in cycle two, 84%, 85. So I'm thinking somewhere around there, but I could be wrong. So what I want to take a look at is, okay, now we're on the right track. You know, we're in, the, we're in 2019, or excuse me, we're in 2023. 
And we are going in this direction of the reset years. How would that look like for dollar cost average? And we had talked about this before, but I wanted to make this a little bit more uh, graphically available to people. And what I'm taking a look at here is Bitcoin. If we invested $100 every week since 2018, and there's a great website, dca-cc.com, links in the description, you can check that out. But you can see right here that if we did $100 for every week, starting in the, the worst year, the dip year, not the reset year, not, not two years after the all-time high, we would have invested $20,000 to Bitcoin's all-time high. Hopefully you hit it and you sell at the, at the exact moment that it hits high, but chances are you won't, but this is what it could have done. You would have had a 7X. Now in 2018, you would have been eating crow for quite some time and have been pretty nervous and there's a lot more risk. So just remember that. Now let's take a look at what I call the reset year. And the reset year was 2019. That's when things were starting to go up a little bit. And you can just tell, just taking a look here, that you're not underwater. That gold line right there, you're not as underwater as, as much as you used to be. And what's interesting to know is that you would have invested 15000 You would have had roughly 100000 99433 as far as an appreciation if you would have sold the all-time high. But look at the gain. For the more risk, you have only a 7x versus a 6.5x. And that of course, gets me to what I talk about as far as diversification. Here's how I diversify right now. Most of it's in cash, 1% in stables. I got some DGen plays, masterworks, fractional shares of art. Mostly it's land and real estate. Amazon business, staking, crypto, 1% in the IRA and, and a little bit of uh, in, into stocks. But I like to diversify a little bit. And uh, that's why, because it's all about how much risk to reward. Okay, so getting back to this one. Now, let's just say that I'm like, you know what? I don't want to deal with any risk. I just want to wait till the Bitcoin halving, which was in 2020, just kind of start to do that. And you could, you would invest at almost 10,000 and you got 42,000 back, which is pretty great. In all honesty, you would have four X if you would have done that starting in January 1st, 2020. Again, the more risk you take sometimes, the better off you have as far as the returns. This is not financial advice. You can do whatever you want to. I'm not your father. But that's just what it is. Now, let's just say I'm like, I don't want to do any risk. Let me just start investing when uh, we're hitting the bull run. And you could, but she'd go from $4,600 to $6,785 if you've done $100 per week. Now, let's go down that list. Let's take a little bit more risky into altcoins. So Ethereum, if I started January 1st, I would have done a 16X. Again, in 2018, that was the dip year. Now, the reset year in 2019, take a look at this. You would have done a 17X on the reset year. Again, what are the reset years? 2015, 2019, 2023. So isn't it amazing that you, you took more risk, but you'd had less of a return? Now you would have more money, but the return, the 17X is what we're talking about. Let's just say you wait again. I'm like, I'm just gonna wait till the, you know, the Bitcoin halving and you could have done 11X, 100 bucks a week. Or on the bull run, you would have done a whopping 2X, congratulations. It's something, right? Now let's go down even farther down the altcoin rabbit hole and do this. Let's take Cardano. If you were starting in 2018, you would have done a 35X. You would have put 19,300 in and got 686,000. This is interesting. If you were to wait for the reset year, again, 2015, 19, 2023, you would add a 39X. Again, not as much money, but your return is a heck of a lot better for a lot less risk. And this is, of course, crypto, the riskiest asset that's out there. If you had to wait until 2020, not too bad, 26X. And then during the bull run, just a paltry 3X. And now this is the most important part. I need you to remember this and burn this into your brain, which is this. Just because you're into crypto doesn't mean everything's going to go up. And that's what I call a dash of salt. There are some products that will never come back, some products that are vastly underperforming. And these are two of them. Dash, I have nothing against Dash personally. I don't really care. It's just an investment. But if you would have done Dash, $100 per week, starting on January 1st, 2018, and you would have sold the top, which is about a 3X. Do you really want to do that for four years in a very risky asset class? Why would you do that? And here's another, another example. Salt. Salt was the next big thing as far as lending platform. Centralized, I might add. I don't care how much you DCA. You're not coming back from this. $17 to the all-time high and just pretty much flat line. Now it's roughly three cents as of today. So 
that's all we have. Again, past performance is not indicative of future results. And that'll lead me to my last point. Because even though this all looks great and it all looks good and looks like uh, this could actually happen any day now, we're in a different environment. First time we've ever done quantitative tightening. And that's where the Fed reduces their balance sheet or some of their holdings on their balance sheet and start to sell things off. This is from NewYorkFed.org. And you can just see this last one here change from the prior week about $12 billion. So they're taking off $12 billion per week. Let's just round up and just say it's about $60 billion, maybe $80 billion per month as they start to unwind all the different things that they bought and kind of propped up all these things. So that's going to keep happening, which is going to uh, lead to a little bit more of, of pain and heartache in the uh, traditional finance world and in the crypto world. So just remember, quantitative easing, we've done quite a bit of, quite a bit of that, printing money, quantitative tightening, first time ever, and they got to take a lot off because guess what they did? They printed a ton of money. And you can just see here, this is the M2 money supply growth versus inflation. This is from longtermtrends.net, link in the description. M2 money stock is a measure for the amount of currency in circulation. It includes M1, physical cash and checkable deposits, as well as less liquid money, such as savings bank accounts. Now, I got to tell you, when at first glance, it doesn't look too hot. So this red is inflation. And of course, uh, in the blue or black or whatever, navy blue you want to call it or black, is the M2 growth rate. And you're going to see here, after coronavirus, uh, we had an M2 growth rate of 26, 27%, which is the highest in history. Now, what's interesting here is that you see this inflation rate, 2.6, 5%, so on and so forth. It peaked out at around 8.54%, but it's been coming down. It's amazing that it's actually there. And this is actually coincides with one of our one of our friends over there at uh, Trueflation, trueflation.com, link in the description. And this takes the chain link, the Oracle to pull in outside data to get real-time assessment of what inflation actually is. And the Trueflation year-over-year -year rate right now for the United States is looking pretty good. It's not the 7% that uh, the M2 money supply versus uh, inflation is looking at. We're looking at 7% or somewhere around there as far as inflation but it's going down in the right direction. And I gotta tell you, that makes me quite bullish. Unfortunately, if we take a look at the UK, not looking too good for our friends across the pond, looking pretty, pretty bleak. But again, and I'll finish this up by saying this, this is a much different environment than what we've ever been in because we've, Bitcoin has never gone through, actually people say it's never gone through a war, but uh, America has been in, Af was in Afghanistan for decades. Seem to do okay during that time. And it's, of course, Bitcoin never gone through a pandemic, worked out okay in, in that situation. And now we're talking about money tightening and an economic repression, or not a depression, but a recession. And Bitcoin has never been through that. I think it was just one more thing, but if we can take a look at what we just saw, I think that there's still gains to be had moving forward. Anyhow, so that is what we have for today. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. We do most of the things we talk about as far as news, but today a little bit different, just to give some people a little bit of bullishness. Not to say that I am 100% bullish, but I think it's a step in the right direction. Anyhow, consider uh, liking, subscribe. Thanks so much for stopping by, and I'll see you on the next one.